Hi, everybody. This is James Lott Jr. This is the SRS Show with James Lott Jr. I'm the super organizer. And I'm here, you know, folks, I like to bring back former guests. But first, I want to tell you first, it is February 20th, 2024. We're heading towards March. I don't know what's going on here. It's a leap week. No, well, next week's leap week. Next week is leap week. Next no, week's leap week, yep. Next week is leap week. We have a leap day, and I have some leap day stuff coming up, so stay tuned on Jail Media for that. Um, but I decided to bring a former guest, who I said the other day on my show, I guess two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. I said he's one of the people that came on my show eight years ago, the first time, when I rebooted my show. Uh, cha I changed the name a little bit and changed the dates or whatever. And he's been on a couple times since then, but it's been a while since he's been on. Uh, he's the organized guy. He's from the East Coast. I know, he always says he covers the East Coast. I cover the West Coast. It's Vinny Jacaloni. Hi, Vinny. How are you, James? <laughs> it's so good. All right. So before we do this, uh, I want to give my thanks and gratitude. And I want to give my thanks and gratitude to Napo San Diego. I just spoke at their um, their uh, chapter meeting. I talked about self-care and super organizer. And we had the, oh, my God, we had the best time. Um, and I want to, I, I really agree with you because usually the question and answer period is like five, 10 minutes. It went on for an hour. Uh, so apparently I liked what I said or liked what my, they were interested in my life. So to so all the ladies and gentlemen who came and to Bethel Swift, who is the chapter president and to everybody who just, which is so wonderful to me, they put me up at the, at the Dana Mission Bay Hotel in San Diego, which I didn't want to leave. So gratitude to them too. I had a good extra day there, <clears throat> relaxing in the sun. Gratitude for the West Coast. Um, and thank you so much. And I want to thank all of them for their support. All the chapters always support me. I've spoken at many chapters. I'm available for speaking too. Okay, that's done. All right. Um, so Vinny. Yes. We were talking beforehand and afterwards. And we're talking because I because he was asking me some questions. I want to answer them on camera so people kind of know what's going on too. Um that I, he knew me when I started out on the radio, on AdrenalineRadio.com. I feel like it's like 10,000 years ago. Uh, I reached out to him. He reached back. One of the few guys in the business. The few of us running around. Yep. Um, and we came in. So do you remember Do you remember that time period when I came? I reached out to Well, you shocked there was another old male organizer. I can't remember back then what you thought. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, uh, I've been an April member now almost 10 years. So, yeah, when I look on the uh, directory, you know, it, it it's very rare that you see men pop up. And I, I'm trying to remember how exactly you and I hooked up. I think we were getting, um, I think I saw a thread that came through like, um, you know, the NAPO uh, point. I think yep. that's where I found you. Mm -hmm. And then you and I just connected and, and it's been that way ever since. So, yep. you know, yeah, that's where it started. Yeah, I mean... Because I had the only radio show on organizing, I mean, ever. I still still have it. I'm the only one person who had it. Um, but yeah, I, I think I, we saw each other on the thread. I was like, man. I think I was like, I need you. Um, come on here. Um, you know, you're a man. Let's talk. Because, I mean, it's a female-dominated industry. And I mean, and they started it. And so we came in on it. And I remember your, your and you were different than me in terms of your approach to the business, what you offer compared to mine. Can you explain to folks what the who the or what the organ organized guy offers? You know, James, I still believe that it's the same thing. I, I still offer that difference in in this industry of being a male, and it's a positive thing. I mean, listen, there are a lot of great women in this industry. I give them tons of credit for everything that they do and what they bring to the table, and I, I understand in uh, in many respects why this is a female dominated industry in terms of how women approach things versus men. I mean, let's face it, you know, we're men a little more rougher on the edges in many ways. However, that doesn't change the fact that we can't be compassionate. We can't exhibit the same um, feelings of empathy and sympathy for our clients and, and their situations. But that little difference I have, and again, this is, believe me, this is not a knock against any of my, any of the ladies in our group, is that I, I truly do get asked to do a little more of what I always call the heavy lifting type projects. You know, so when the garage comes up, it's like, you know, it just seems like I'm a perfect fit for that. I'll, I'll do them all day long, but I do really anything under the roof of the house. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where we've had to kind of prove ourselves a little bit that we are, that anybody can organize, no matter what gender, you can you both can organize, no matter what age, mm -hmm. or as much. Can you can't organize, but I know we do think differently. Yes, we do think differently, and I and I I know I do, and 
Um, but I always say because I used to be a nurse, so that helped me a little bit. And I also have daughters. That helps a little bit too. When you have a daughter, it does help. It does help mm-hmm. a little bit. You know how to react to that. Um, but I like that you said that men also can be compassionate and empathetic and sympathetic mm-hmm. to any situation. And I I don't know about for you, but I know for some of my female clients, they just like having a male around to kind yes. of take care of it. Is that the same for you too? Yeah, no, I do find that that as well. Um I think, you know, with some of my my female clients, um, I think they feel a little sense of comfort, you know, but I, I do attribute that to, in all honesty, I feel like I'm pretty, I'm a pretty good listener. And I think at the foundation of what we do, James, you have to listen to what these people are talking about, because it's not always about, oh, you know, look, my closet's all clogged up. Okay, fine. That's a visual. We could see that. But I think it's what's most important is you really have to listen, whether it's male or female what their problem is because you know like you said you're doing this as long as i have um i'm in the mindset that especially with with my repeat clients inevitably if you're listening if you're listening deeply to them you always get the backstory of what's really happening and what's causing the visual clutter that they have going on in their lives whatever it is there's always a backstory and that's really where the rubber meets the road in terms of how you can really help make a difference in their life. But you have to listen to your clients. I teach a course on active listening. So it's funny you say yes. that. I do. It's a, it's, it's a really serious thing, actually. Um, when you come to your clients, you have to listen. And, and now I say listen. You're listening with your eyes, listening with your ears, listening with their body language. You're, listen, you're, mm-hmm. you're listening. It's like you're watching, too, but you're listening. And sometimes the things they don't say... That's right. what you have to hear. Um, so I think it's, I love that you say that. I think it's for anybody. It's great advice for anybody. Any new organizers in there, just, you know, or any new coaches out there, just like, listening is a great thing. And actually doing this business has made me a better listener outside. Oh, yeah, I agree 100%. You know, and it's funny you say that you teach classes in that because I I, I took a class, became a, a staff member and, a, and also a, a director of one through the Boy Scouts you know, many, many years ago. And one of the segments, the modules, because it's a leadership development course, one of the modules on it was about active listening and communication and two-way communication. So, um, you know, I use those tools and they work and they, and it really does make you, I believe, more valuable to your clients because you now become that trusted advisor, you know, and it's so, in, in the cases, if I think about any of the clients that I have that I have ongoing, I've got, you know, like, like I'm sure you do, you have, you know, I have a handful of clients I've had for years. And it's funny is that, you know, when I tell other people, not their names, I, I, I'm a, you know, we all protect the innocent in our industry, yes. but I have business associates or, or, you know, people I come across and they're, they're actually very surprised often the time they said, you actually have someone that you work with for years? And I go, yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, what are you doing with them? And I said, that's what you don't understand. It's yes, we're working, we're organizing, we have projects to do. But some of these people, it becomes, which I'm sure you can appreciate, therapeutic. You know, you're you're the sounding board, you're listening. Some of these people have, you know, maybe no family or they don't have a good connection with their family. In essence, you become kind of the quasi-therapist, the quasi-family member. And so, you know, you can't underscore that and and minimize that it's huge to have to be able to gain that kind of insight and trust with your clients well i try to explain to somebody to a new person i go they go how do you have ret- basically it's retention so how do you have retention that's a total business thing i go but if you if you organize them isn't it done i go you guys understand life changes mm-hmm. so they're married well, what if one of the husband what if the husband dies right you, you i mean not to sound morbid, but you want them to think of you to help with that process. Or they're single when you first meet them and they get married at some point. You want them to think of you uh, for downside, or they have to downsize, or they're retiring, or they have a child, or the child leaves. Like you want them to, you want them to, you may not work with them every single day all the time, but you want them when they need you for a project. Vinny, got it. I'm gonna call it Vinny. So and so is moving out. We gotta get, we gotta help us with the pack. Like, 
that's kind of the point, right? And right. I think that's and if you're if you're good, like like a plumber or a gardener or an electrician, they don't you like again, you don't work with them every day, but you can work with them for years. I mean, I have clients I've had for at least 10, God, I'm I think I have one client, I think it's at 13 years, because I've been doing 15, like just yeah. just when life changes or they move or get a new job, it's like it's I'm right there. They call you. They call you. You so want me to go to person. Please, go ahead. Oh, I, I just had that happen to me in December. I, I sent out, you know, my email blast to, you know, my my list. And I had a client who hired me eight years ago, right after her parents had passed. And I helped her, you know, downsize the house because she had to get it cleaned out to be sold. Well, lo and behold, she got my uh, email blast and she contacts me and she says, you know, she goes, I've been thinking about you and thinking about you. She goes, I haven't picked up the phone. She goes, but I got your email. She goes, guess what? I'm like, okay, here. And I and she was, I loved working with her. She was so much fun. Yes. She says, well, I had some stuff left over at my parents' house, and I put it in storage yeah. for eight years. Of course. That happens, of course. So now I'm working with her again because the goal is to get to clean, you know, make decisions on this stuff and get rid of the storage unit to save her money. She lives in the city and she's got a storage unit out here on the island. Yeah. But to your point, it was that I, you know, again, eight years went by, eight years. And then it just, you know, she gets my email, you know, my my uh, newsletter blast. And next thing you know, the phone gets picked up and she goes, I need to see you again. So you're hundred percent right. You want them to think about you. And it clicked in her head and she realized that she had to make a change because life is shifting again. And I got the call. Yeah, I've known you before too. I just my once before. Yeah, I do those little email things or a little, a little thing every once in a while too. It was, oh my god, yes, I, oh, I remember. Yes, can I need you? I need you, or my friend needs you. I was thinking about your name. I couldn't remember your phone number. My friend could use you. I'm glad you contacted me. A lot of, them, a lot of times are happy to hear from you. Or just even say hi. They're like, hi, how you doing? I'll be, I'll be checking. How you doing over there? What's going on? Um, and they'll say fine. But I just think that there's life is always moving and changing. And you're not, you're not, we're not here to cure nobody. It's not, it's, that's not the thing. We mm-hmm. can organize and then that's it. See you later. Our job is done. It's like, well, no, it's, it, hopefully they're empowered to continue organization. But I'm saying that the things do come up. Sometimes it's a maintenance issue. I mean, I would be something big. Right. Like I was busy for five months and all of a sudden my clots mess. Can you help me kind of get it back into shape? Freshen it up. That's, that's fine too. I mean, that's, that happens also. Um, right. There's one thing that you were doing. I don't do. I have <laughs> as that because you were like full service. So you like I know because when we talked last time, you were also you would be in that, in that garage and building closets or building that closets as shelves and putting like I don't do that. But so you do that sometimes too, right? You do you could you could like organize a closet, organize a garage, and say okay, I can put some shelves up too if you want me to, right? Yeah, like I tell people, listen, you know, I, I'm not a carpenter, okay, <laughs> but I do know my my the right end of a hammer. Yes. Um, I'm honest with my clients. I just lay it out to them and, and based on, you know, they tell me what they they want. And if it's in my wheelhouse, yes, I will do it. You know, I've, I, you know, so to the extreme, yeah, I've had clients or, or leads call me up and they say, Oh, I really want some cabinets installed. And I tell them, I said, listen, all the respect, it, it's not what I do. Yeah. I, and, and really honestly, James, I, I've learned over almost being in business 10 years with this, that I, it's not really what I want to do. So I don't really push that service with my clients because I don't want to do it. However, you know, yeah, putting some racking in, putting a couple shelves up, you know, and yeah, if you know, I have my senior clients, my I always call them my affectionately my grandma clients. Yep, I have your those. Yeah, I, I have my tool bucket with me because they always need something fixed. Always, can, always, yes. If I could do it, yes, I will do yeah, it. Yeah. But I, no, I'm not the electrician. I'm not the plumber. You know, but if I could do it, I'll do it. Same here. Um, how was it for you during the pandemic? Briefly, how was it? How was it for you during? Oh the my goodness, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so yeah, when everything shut down that March, yes, like, like I'm sure, like you are, we were all just sitting home. Yes. So I did. I was just doing videos at the time. I just kept doing these one two minute videos and put, you know, just to have something to put out there. And I can't explain. Well, no, I can't explain it. Three months later, the phone started ringing off the hook. And I was literally for over a year was working almost seven days a week. 
And I didn't really think much about it in the beginning, but when I looked back upon it, I think it was pretty easy to explain, which is that when I look at it now, you know, you think about it, everything was shut down. So nobody was going out. Nobody was going, yeah, they were getting their paycheck. They're going to work and work remotely, but there's no restaurants. There's no sporting nope. events. Nope. There's no place for people to spend their money. And now they're stuck in the house. Yes. So all the, all the things that they looked at, whether it was the garage or the closet, or what, it doesn't matter what room, they're looking at their house and now they're going, I'm stuck in the house and I can't even stand my own house. And the phone just kept ringing and people were calling up. I need this fixed. I need that organized. And, and I just, I was like, okay. And I just, it was like, like I said, six, almost sometimes, sometimes seven days a week, I was out with clients one-on-one, you know, I mean, we wore the masks, we wore the gloves, you know, we did everything that we could to be safe, but it got, it was crazy for over a year. Wow. I said, I didn't organize for a year. And then when the vaccinations came out, LA was really shut down and it was really bad. Yeah. Um, and then when but say my clients were not, they weren't even, they were like, don't come to my house. So they were like not into it. But then yeah. when the vaccinations started happening, then I was busy, like you said. Mm -hmm. Office work. It was like, okay, all of a sudden my 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 group of clients were like, okay, now we're ready. And you're right. We're home, we see everything, everything's gonna get fixed. Um, yes. So I do understand, I understand that. So I'm glad you but I just thought that us on the coast, especially New York State. California, we were like, it was very much shut down. It was a lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I think people, I had a few clients, they were, I had people on both ends of the spectrum. You know, some people were like really, you know, super like, you yes. know, got to stay away from me. And, yeah. and but they, but they're like, I want you to work, but you can't come near me. And I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, and right, no, right, people, no, like, we'll figure it out. Yeah, you know, figure it out. I'll figure it out. You know, and I, you know, I, I wore the booties and I, I wore, sometimes I wore the suits. I mean, listen, if that's what made them comfortable, you know, Been people here. were still, well, cause you know, listen, people were still living, you know, yeah. I still had people that, Hey, I'm moving. I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but I, I have to move. Okay. Well, you know, then we got to figure out how do we do this safely? So everybody's comfortable and we, we made it work. I had other people, they were just like, eh, whatever, just come on over. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So whatever, you know, whatever floated their boat, you know. Well, I said, this is why so fast. I said, I only have them for a short time, folks. But I want to bring them back on here because I just, I'm a, just a big fan. This is about me now. This is my show. So you have followed me, but seriously, you have followed me for, for you know, almost, you know, almost 10 years. Uh, what is, you see me come from just this little small thing to where I am today. So like, what, what are some of your thoughts about me when you see my stuff online? Well, oh, I'm curious. I, you know what? You, you always amaze me because... I mean, we're, yeah, we're connected on social media, obviously, on several platforms. So, you know, over the years, whether we've actually spoken or not, doesn't, you know, we've still connected. We've still stayed connected. And I, I had, you know, you had the show. I remember at one point you were doing, I, I, I have this vague memory of you doing some kind of like red carpet interviewing. Um, I know. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember for a while I was, I was following you because you were, um, I guess, like, um, documenting when you were having the Bell's palsy. Yes, Bell's palsy. Yes. At home. Right? So yeah. I was following you on that. I was very concerned about you then because, you know, I, I know things weren't, you know, in the best, you, you know, I see you doing 10 yeah. times, you know, and I read it. And because of you, I actually read about what Bell's palsy is. Good. Like, I, I never heard of that. Good. And so I, well, I read about it because when I saw that you had it, I got concerned. I said, Oh, what's wrong with him? And I said, well, let me read about what this is. And I said, oh, it's recoverable. Okay, good. He's got, there's a chance here. He's going to come out of this. He's going to come out of it. Yeah. And I saw you did. And I was so happy for you. Yeah. Um, I know you've had some, you know, other issues in your life, uh, losses and things of that nature, but so it just, you know, and I've seen you traveling around and you've been from California back to your hometown in Pittsburgh. And, you know, and again, I just, I love following you on social media because I always feel like you're just, you're all over, you know, you, you're not cornered in one little place. You, you, you know, you're always moving around and I'm really impressed me. I, you know, I just kind of, I'm on the road and I'm just, let me go organize, you know, and <laughs> why, I, it's why I always like following you. I kind of live vicariously in some way through, you know, your life, I live, I live my life through yours. <laughs> well, I was just, I'm always curious. Like I say, cause people thought you guys, I said, you've known me for a long time. And I always think, what do people think about me as they see? Cause I always post all this stuff and, you know, I was on Jimmy Kimmel and I was, I was always doing things. I'm like, how do they, how do they, uh, you know. Make the connections, man. I'm impressed. 
I'm trying. You know, I'm trying for our industry. I'm trying, and so yes. you're still you're in the circle. So I will, that will never I will never <laughs> leave you behind. I told you I did that a long time ago. Never leave you behind. Um, but Vinny, thank you so much for coming on the show and just being a friend uh, to the show and a friend to me all these years. No, my, James, my pleasure. I, I just love the fact that you and I have just stayed connected for so long. And, and you know, even though we've never met in person, it doesn't matter. I, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, but at some point, it doesn't matter. Right? Can, at some point, you're going to meet. At some point, you know what? At some point, you're 100% right. You got to do it. Uh, so tell folks where they can find the organized guy and all that. I, I want them to follow you. And I'll put in the okay, link. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. you. So you can go to my website. It's theorganizedguy.com. You can also find me on Facebook at The Organized Guy, uh, Instagram, um, the organized, at The Organized Guy. Those are really the best places to find me. Um, Google, just, I, I guess um, you find me wherever. Just put The Organized Guy in your search. <laughs> and I'm, I'm usually going to pop up whether you like it or not. You're like me, the super organizer, the organized guy. We are, we're first page, folks. He's first page on Google. So don't worry, he's first page on Google. You'll find him. But I'll put it you know, so you can flex it. I love what I do. I know you feel exactly the same way because I, I know at the end of the day, we and you I know you'll agree with this, is that you know, we do make a difference. We do. And I and I really believe that's that's why any organizer should be in this business, is because they make yep. a difference yep. in their clients' lives. Yes, I agree. And also, if you want education and camaraderie, there's also napo.net. So you can check Napo. that out, the Association of Professional Organizers. Well, Productivity and Organizing. There's also ICD. There's NAS. Mm -hmm. Man, there's, a bunch of, there's a bunch of different uh, organizations that are highly respected and have all kinds of things in the organizing world. So check all of those out. Uh, I'm James Lott Jr. You can follow me. We're all James Lott Jr. a soul. That James Lott Jr. on all social media platforms. Super Organizers there too. JLJ Media is there also. And a lot of help.com slash super organizer. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for joining us.